Hey, what's going on neighborhood youth and young adults? Glad to be back here with you. Uh, I have one announcement before we get going. As you all know, uh, I've tried to text uh, as many of you as I could, message as many of you as I could, but next Tuesday, we're gonna restart our youth and young adult service. Uh, that's Tuesday, August 4th. It's gonna be from six to seven. And right after the end of this sermon video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna go right into last week's update video so you can get caught up and just uh, reacquainted with what the details are and what things are gonna look like. So be on the lookout for that right after this sermon video. It's gonna cut right to last week's update video. And if you have any questions or concerns or thoughts, please let me know as soon as, as you can. So let's get started on today's sermon. Uh, today I wanna to talk about anxiety and what's been going on in our society, what's been uh, happening as of 2020 when it comes to the coronavirus and being shut down and things like that. So let's pray and then I'm going to talk about it. So Father, I just lift you up and we thank you for today. Uh, the fact that we can, God, even though we can't be together, Lord, and we look forward to next week and God, if all things work out, Lord, we, we uh, God, just are, are so excited for that, Lord, and we trust you, and God, we just uh, believe that you are working in our hearts, Lord, even though, God, we can't meet together right now, Lord, in, in our homes, Lord, you are there, God. When we're driving, God, you are there. When we're listening to the sermon, God, you are there. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Open up our minds and our hearts to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, during this time, everything seems like it's up in the air. A lot of I don't knows, a lot of there's no clear answers as to what's going on or what tomorrow might look like. And that might lead to worry about our future. Uh, that might lead us to be anxious or hesitant about doing things and, and putting things into action. And we maybe maybe just put things on the shelf and maybe just put them on hold for a while because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when things are going to open up. We don't know when a vaccine is, is going to be created to wipe out this coronavirus. And we might even second guess ourselves during this time and resolve to inaction rather than action. You know, just this past Sunday, hopefully you were able to watch uh, our Sunday service and I had the privilege and the opportunity and the honor to preach then and uh, it truly felt led by the Holy Spirit and the Lord really did some special things through that sermon and during that sermon even after that sermon but however two weeks leading up to that when I was preparing and, and just reflecting and praying and asking God God how do you want me to say what you desire for me to say and I really felt like I was being attacked by Satan and he would just try to throw me off course and making me second guess the things that God really wanted me to say and that he would just tell me things like, hey, no one wants to hear that or that's going to cause up trouble. That's not going to encourage people. And it really caused me to pause and think like, well, is that true? Is that not true? I don't know. Unfortunately for me, I, I believe that that lie for a while. I kind of felt like I was in a spiritual battle. You know, one verse that I clung to during that whole time was Joshua 1 9, where it says, Have I not told you, this is God speaking, have I not told you, be strong and have strength of heart. Do not be afraid or lose faith, for the Lord your God is with you anywhere you go. You know, Joshua was leading the Israelites. Moses had died, and Je Joshua was next to lead. He was worried, he was concerned. He was looking at the task and said, man, that seems so daunting. I don't know if I can do this. However, just before, God has spoke amazing promises to Joshua. And God knew that his servant would be afraid, that he would be worried. He would be fearful at what he was calling him to. But he doesn't just leave it. Uh, with a calling and then just backs away. He was with Joshua. He spoke to Joshua. He encouraged him. I love what Tony Dungy has to say about this moment in history. If you don't know who Tony Dungy is, he's a famous football coach. He doesn't coach anymore, but he led the Indianapolis Colts to a Super Bowl. He's a great man of faith, very quiet man, but has, has a lot of strength in him. He says this, I'll bet if you close your eyes, you can almost see Joshua's knees knocking. Feel his pulse racing. Watch pools of sweat form on the ground beneath his perspiring 
palms. I probably said that wrong, but no doubt this is a high anxiety moment he is feeling. And he realizes the position God has calling him to take. Now that moment that now that Moses had died, Joshua has been chosen by God to lead the Israelites into the promised land. Listen closely, you can probably hear him nervously muttering, Me? Are you sure, Lord? There's got to be someone else you could pick. I, I've been there, you've been there. When God has called us to do something or we're challenged to do something great and something that is going to be impactful, we, we doubt ourselves and say, Really? Should I be doing this? Is this the right thing? Should I act upon this? I, I don't know. God, can you pick someone else? But one thing stands above Joshua's anxiety here. It's God's promises. His promises reign and are true for you and for me. So, what's God calling you today? What is He calling you to do today? Are you feeling anxious for what's next in your life? Are you anxious just about the day-to-day? -day? What's tomorrow going to look like? What's uh, school going to look like? What's uh, college plans going to look like? What's my job going to look like? Am I going to have enough money to make it to the end of the week? You know, here's what I believe that we can apply from this promise of God. First point is this, remember. You know, God had to remind Joshua of what he just said. He said, have I not told you? In other words, Joshua, what did I just say? In times of anxiety, worry, fear, remember what God has done in your life. Let that bring you to a place of peace. Recall those hard times and begin to worship God for what He did in your life and what He is going to do in the present and in the future. Second point is this, God knows. If God had to speak this into the life of Joshua, we can be assured that he understood what was going on. He understood the weight of the fear that Joshua was in, that burden of fear that was placed on Joshua by his own anxiety. And in those moments when God speaks his promises, they destroy the fear that leaves us shaking in our shoes. 1 Corinthians 8.3 says, But whoever loves God is known by God. Being known by God can, can sound intimidating, but when you reflect on it, when you think about it, it's truly a beautiful thing. He knows us, and even though we mess up, even though we become fearful, we worry, we doubt, He still loves us and uses us in His kingdom to do great and mighty works. Whether they're small things or big things, He uses them. Today, tomorrow, and in the future, God sees when you're full of anxiety, full of worry, full of pain, full of sorrow. When you are depressed, He sees you and He knows that you are valuable and you can be used by Him for His glory and for your good. Believe in that promise today. Your life is not a waste. Don't allow the lies that people tell you or where Satan tells you to become the truth because that's not truth at all. Your life is not a waste because God sees you and He can deliver and transform your life today. Would you do what Joshua did in chapter 5 of, of the book of Joshua in, in verses 13 through 15? What he did when the angel of the, when the angel of the Lord visited him. He humbled himself and said, what do you want me to do? What's the message that you're speaking? Can you humble yourself today? I, I'm choosing to humble myself today in a time of prayer I just had earlier this morning. And I told God, God, I humble myself and I'm listening to you. God, what do you want me to do today? In the face of anxiety, in the face of worry, in the face of trouble, in the face of not knowing, God, what do you desire for me to do today? God, what are you speaking? What's the message that you're trying to tell me today? My third point is this, act. Joshua was given that promise, but that promise was not to just be believed and then sat on. Joshua was given that promise to then go and act, to do something. You know, anxiety will always hold us back. It will grip us. It will restrict us. Yet when God speaks, freedom happens, and then we can go and do what He has freed us to do. You know, that thing that God is calling you to do, to pursue, to dream, has not died when you face anxiety, when you become anxious. 
God is still in the fog. God is still in the mist. You just need to take one step and walk hand in hand with him into what his purposes and his plans are for you. Take that one step today. And as I close, I have three questions that we always uh, try to ask. Different questions, but I just desire for you to reflect in this moment, in this time. That reflection will lead you to prayer, and that prayer will lead you to action. My first question is this. As you watch this, as you hear me out today, would you say that you're full of anxiety? What are you anxious about today? Do you feel like God is calling you to do something for His kingdom but anxiety has gripped you, has restricted you, has caused you to shrink back? The third question is this, what's one step you can take to follow God's purpose today? What's one action step, whether it be small or whether it be a big leap? What's one thing, what's one step that you can take today? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time. God, that we can dive into your word. God, dive into uh, your, 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 your truth, your promises, Lord, and we can apply it to our life. And Lord, we ask that we would be strong and courageous by your strength, Lord, not our own strength. God, that we would face anxiety head on, Lord, knowing that you are with us, God. Your hand is in our hand, and God, you will never let go. God, we ask that you would help us to recall the great and mighty things that you've done in our life before God, and what you're doing now, and God, that would propel us into a future full of faith, knowing, God, that your promises are true, your promises are yesterday, today, and tomorrow, God. We believe in you, God, and I ask, God, that you would help us today to take that one step of whatever you're calling us to do, Father, to take that one step, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, remember, before we go, you are loved and you are valued. God bless you. Hey, what's going on, neighborhood youth and young adults? Pastor Nick here with you. Today, there's not going to be any sermon because I wanted to give you an update on what things are going to look like when we reopen our youth and young adult service. Yes, you heard that right. We're going to reopen. We're going to relaunch on Tuesday, August 4th. Mark that down in your calendars. Put that in your phones right now. And that's tentatively, we're going to schedule and aim for Tuesday, August 4th. And of course, with things constantly changing in terms of restrictions, I'm gonna do my best here to keep you updated on where things are at, where things stand. But as of now, August 4th is the date that we're aiming for. Our protocols for our Tuesday service is gonna look like this, is as it follows, it's gonna be this. We're gonna require those of you who are under 18 to have a signed permission slip from your parents or your guardians. If you're over 18, you can sign it uh, when you get to church or I'm gonna send it out to you through email or text. Uh, go ahead and sign that, print it out, sign it if you can, bring it. Uh, and then masks are gonna be required. We are gonna be doing our best uh, to social distance no van rides or leader rides are going to be given. I know that's that's a tough uh, thing to hear, but we have to make these kind of decisions to keep everybody safe. In the case of an emergency, uh, we can always work something out between uh, the leaders and, and your parents and I. We can work something out if it comes to that. Our service is going to be an hour long from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And we're going to be live streaming our service for those who can't make it or maybe you choose not to attend because you don't feel comfortable yet. So we hope to see you Tuesday, August 4th. Please text, call, message us on social media if you or your parents or guardians have any questions or concerns. I'm here to answer them, here to kind of give you more clarification if you need it. But I'm looking forward to this. Pray, be praying uh, that this virus just goes away and that Tuesday, August 4th, we'll be here together once again with our masks on, worshiping Jesus together, uh, just getting, just uh, catching up with each other as well and just being a community again. I know that a lot of you have been missing it. I've been missing it as well. So let's pray that August, Tuesday, August 4th comes around and that we're able to, to resume and restart our services.